Hello everyone, I'm Charlie and this is a special edition of Charlie's Reviews. Uh, today, as part of the Oster Superman uh, community uh, review project, started by um, Sleepy Reader 666, which um, I thank for, for inviting me to do this. Uh, I will review All Star Superman number 7. The story is called um, Being Bizarro and it's actually the first part of um, a two-part story. So in this story, what we in this issue what we basically get is, you know, uh, the origin of, of these bizarro creatures that for the most part, most of this issue is Superman fighting them. Uh, we learn that these uh, bizarros uh, are creatures from the underverse that's like the universe below our universe you know uh, and it turns out that you know it's actually a planet eater so it's a really huge huge planet, planet eater who ends up mimicking the earth and it and giving us you know this really nice homage to the classic bizarro world um, so they're sort of um, infectious so these sort of uh, creatures you know sort of start landing on on earth you know coming down like you know like like meteorites you know just crash landing on earth and attacking people infecting them and uh, making them be bizarre as well so uh, Superman is fighting them uh, while Jimmy uh, is helping the uh, staff at the Daily Planet escape because you know they one of them actually entered the uh, the, uh, the, the, the Daily Planet and you know whoever they touch you know, they sort of infect and turn them into users as well. But it seems that uh, Steve Lombard, you know, is immune to to the bizarro touch. As it turns out, you know, he's using performance enhancing drugs and that sort of uh, neutralizes the, the bizarro effect, but not necessarily a good solution. So, you know, while they're getting away and waiting for Superman to come and help, uh, Jimmy calls in a project and, and, and Dr. Quintum, who tells them that they are, uh, that it's like one massive, one massive creature that eats planets, but they are actually vulnerable to, to the sunlight, to the yellow sunlight. So that's why they're attacking uh, on the dark side of, of the earth so once Superman arrives to help them uh, you know and you know he actually discovers that uh, Lombard is using using uh, performance enhancing drugs you know pills or whatever uh, that wasn't the solution but Jimmy tells him that they are vulnerable to sunlight and the only way to get that would be by using a massive um, magnifying glass um, so Superman comes to the solution that you know this bizarre world uh, has oceans so he goes up enters the planet, you know, I mean, you can see here, right here how those little bizarre keep coming out, crashes into it, moves it just enough so that the sunlight is reflected here and ends up, ends up destroying them. But, you know, the bizarre planet decides to go back into the underverse while Superman is here stuck in the... Uh, in the bizarro world and as it goes into the underverse uh, 
the red light spectrum of the sun is visible, so that uh, neutralizes, as we all know, red sunlight neutralizes um, Superman's power, so he really can, can't escape. And the issue ends with Superman meeting this Bizarro Bizarro or, or Zibaro, which is an anomaly of the uh, Bizarros. So in fact, it is said that one of every five billion copies is flawed. So the flaw is the flaw, you know, turns out to be somewhat normal. Um, a really enjoyable issue, though I did have a bit of a problem, uh, you know, understanding understanding it at times. I actually had to read three times to finally get all the uh, little things that I think I missed the first time around, even the second time around, especially, you know, dealing with the origin of of the bizarros uh, because uh, at first you know in the first page we sort of you know there it seems that they had one of those uh, bizarro drones that showed up in the first issue missing uh, so I really didn't know what that exactly meant if it's supposed to mean something uh, n uh, something throwaway, which I doubt, uh, or if it had anything to do with this issue, or if that will eventually play up somewhere along along the series, or even in in the next part. Um, as for the art, you know, Frank Whitley's art, a uh, very unique art style. Uh, yeah, very European. But at times, you know, really hard to follow. I, I really didn't get any of what was going on in, in this uh, page. It wasn't really made that clear to me visually. Even the narrative at times, it sort of, you know, kind of uh, strange. To, it was a bit hard to, hard to follow as well, the narrative, the actual writing. In these uh, opening pages, I really didn't grasp any of it. Uh, so I don't really understand what I'm supposed to be looking at here. Uh, what this is supposed to be, you know, it does it does look, you know, I don't know. I, I that was one of the hard parts to follow. Um, but for the rest of it, you know, uh, it was, you know, of course, better. Um, you know, but, you know, it did, I still don't know what, what this page is, is supposed to be. But I'm supposed to be absolutely looking at uh, if this is, you know, uh, the uh, bizarro creature thing that turned into bizarro world. I don't know anything. Uh, I know that it, you know, just looking at it, you know, still trying to figure out a bit where some of this stuff is coming. Up. Anyways, I'm kind of rambling here. Um, yeah, it was a good start for um, for. For this two-part story, you do get uh, a full story here. Uh, you know, on the defeat, the battle and defeat of of the bizarre creatures attacking uh, Earth, and you know, and that was good. Um, so, yeah, okay, kind of brief, really. Um, not going really into much detail. There's really not a lot to talk about in the of this particular issue. Um, 
elect your majest, elect your maj to a bizarro world, a classic bizarro world. Um, uh, and while and while this is uh, somewhat of a great Superman story, it's also a wonderful homage to the craziness of, of the Silver Age. Uh, idea, uh, if you really look at a lot of the stuff that um, Grant Morrison has, has done with Superman, and with Batman is he gets some of the uh, crazier aspects of of their history and and brings it to and more updates that updates it uh, even sort of makes it even much more of a nasty trip if you will just while gets you know those wild ideas of, of the 50s and the 60s and it just you know blows it up into some crazy adventure uh, something like the underverse really you know really seems to harken back to those uh, days when Superman was much more science fiction oriented uh, also the uh, way the Bizarro's attack reminded me of uh, of this issue of, of Superman, this is um, Superman number 237, written by uh, uh, Danny O'Neill, with art by uh, Kurt Swan and Murphy Anderson, uh, where Superman actually gets a disease that uh, sort of distorts people's faces, and basically, he, every time he touches somebody, you know, it's you know he's got it in his hand. So every time he touches somebody, they just end up becoming like these really bizarre looking people. So that's pretty much the way the um, bizarras are attacking uh, through to their hands. So when I was reading this, I was pretty much reminded of, of that of that issue that I just showed uh, as well. Um, another wonderful homage here to classic uh, Bizarro Superman as well and uh, as for the anomaly uh, uh, Bizarro uh, a few stories from the uh, Silver Age have had sort of like a Bizarro as we all know the classic Bizarro Superman is a, dup a faulty duplicate of of uh, Superman uh, nowadays you know he's a an imperfect clone but originally he was a imperfect copy you know created by a ray that would create duplicates uh, that would be flawed uh, so if Bizarro is a flaw of the real Superman there had been stories where I'm thinking probably around Action Comics 253 and 254 there was a Bizarro story there in, in those issues where Bizarro decided to duplicate himself uh, to create a Bizarro Bizarro which turned out to be normal looking and there's also another um, Supergirl sto story where there's a Bizarro Supergirl that was flawed, that was bizarre, but she looked like the normal Supergirl, so you know um, this definitely reminded me of that as well, the fact that a, a flawed Bizarro could exist that looks normal, and we're told here that one of every five billion Bizarros is flawed, and so turns out to be, you know, like very normal and not so you know, brainless, um, mindless, you know, mockeries of human life, I guess you could say. 
So, as I said, um, I will not be signing off as I usually do. As I said, this is a two-part story, so I will pass this the, the baton to La Raza, who will be reviewing part two of this two-part story. So, thank you for watching. I will leave the uh, link to the next person who will be doing the review. That's La Raza. So, leave any comments. Uh, tell me what you think. And... And uh, enjoy, enjoy the uh, the reviews.